Let's have a closer look at another unique design for the 2022 season, the Ferrari F175. For those who are new to my channel, I'm Martin. I've been working for Audi in Germany in various departments of their technical development for 7 years. I moved to the UK and worked for McLaren, Force India and Racing Point in the years 2017, 18, 19 and 20 in their aerodynamics departments. And today I'm a self-employed motorsport consult. And now back to the Ferrari. Let's start with the front. The nose is extra long, the longest we have seen so far. And because of that, the Ferrari doesn't have a detached first element like the competitors. That means the nose gives some extra blockage. What we can see here could be an older version and Ferrari might use an updated design for the first test. Also, the center of the front wing is lowered and the flaps cranked up close to the nose. So that's a center loaded wing. It creates more blockage for the flow path towards the underbody entry but it allows Ferrari to back the wing off at the sides to create more outwash. A little further back we can see that Ferrari designed a pushrod front suspension with an exposed track rod. That gives more blockage again, but also provides another wing shaped element to control the flow. The highlight of the F175 are certainly the side pods. Ferrari pulls the side pods far forward like other teams too. They use high sitting intakes that are significantly bigger than the ones we have seen on the Aston Martin or Alpha Tauri. More about this later. Underneath, they then designed a huge undercut that ends shortly after at a massive straight wall. It looks like Ferrari used the absolute maximum of a rack box in terms of width and height to push the front rear wake as far outboard as possible and also to keep it there. This large wall extends pretty far to the rear so there is little chance for the front rear wake to pull in. Although there is a small undercut underneath the wall, it's tiny compared to the massive undercuts we have seen on the Aston Martin and Alfa Romeo. So Ferrari is pretty safe on pushing the tire wake outboard, but because of that there is less energy reaching the back through the lower flow path. So they created a downwashing side pod while keeping the high side walls. That created this unique side pod shape we can see here and which reminds me of the 2011 McLaren L-shaped side pods. So while everybody else need to pull air to the center to reach the rear, Ferrari has bodywork on the outside and can push air towards the center, similar to a bobsled track. What's interesting then is that the bodywork is rising again, creating a side pod with a dip, which could create a little pond either side when the car is standing in the rain. At the end of the side pod is an opening for the upper wishbone mounting. It has a kick upwards because of the wishbone movement. But this opening points to the back and is larger than what you would usually need for a suspension mounting. This acts as additional air outlet and the significantly larger side pod inlet could blow air towards here. But looking at the direction and because of the fact that there is a wishbone in the way, I cannot see how Ferrari would take an advantage from blowing additional air through that. But this additional outlet enables them to have a smaller exit at the back, which gives more space for the beam wing flow. The louvers on top of the side pod are dramatically shaped and try to keep the low energy cooling air close to the center to guide it between beam wing and rear wing. The beam wing is a two element design and the upper one has such an aggressive angle that it looks like a vertical wall. Ferrari uses a unique double pillar design that attaches from below and from the top. They save some material by that, but basically you have the disadvantages of both concepts at one wing. Mounting points at the suction side and you still need to respect the R100 rule for the pressure side. The main plane is very thick with aggressive camber, the short cord flap is staying straight and rolls down to the end plates relatively late for maximum wing area. The end plates look very thin. We can see a wastegate pipe on top of the main pipe and both join very late right before the end of the exhaust. Some additional things to note on the Ferrari. This lower side pod corner will experience high velocities and is pretty stressed. To not overstress this area, it looks like Ferrari was using a smaller, more gentle outer strake and used a soft rollover to the upper floor surface, which also has a gentle slope. Also Ferrari removed the center cooling and moved it to the side pod, 
which slims the upper part of the bodywork down a lot and removes the ears. The horns next to the airbox help to keep the flow attached under yaw but don't create too much drag on the straights. Also interesting are the little winglets around the cockpit. They help to keep halo and cockpit losses out of the air intake and avoid them from spilling down to important areas. If we go back to our three categories for the F1 cars we have seen so far, the Ferrari should sit in the undercut group. Strangely enough, because it doesn't really have an undercut. So we rename this group into large side pod group. We can see that teams used completely different approaches. Some focused more on keeping the floor happy, some focused on outwash and keeping the tire wake outside. So all in all, a really exciting car that showed us another unique design. We should stay excited to see if all of the little tricks on this car will work and how Ferrari will continue to develop that. See you at the next video.